In this video, I will try to create a 3D game in JavaScript starting from scratch. Our game should have all the basic features and functionalities like any other game out there. We will have two main characters, a hero and a monster, which can move freely in our 3D world. Since the characters can move, they will also need to have certain animations, which we will need to create by ourselves from scratch. We will also need a physics engine, an obstacle detection engine and also a way to create all of our assets since we won't be using any third-party images. We will cover all the essential parts of the game development process in this video. So, let's get right into it! So let us start simple by creating the three files which we are going to need for our game. We are going to need an HTML component, CSS component for styles and we are going to create our core component game.js which is going to have all the logic for our game. Let us start by filling out the HTML file with basic stuff like divs, a title, our score tracking and let us also import all the necessary files that we're going to need. So let us import the necessary libraries like 3, TwinMax and OrbitControls.js. Next part would be to style our components a little bit by giving it color, position and making it work within a browser window. After we have done the groundwork and we have actually something to display in a browser, the next step would be to start creating our game file. In this game file, I'm going to create the first function which is going to initialize everything we will need for our game. And we will add uh, components and functions within that first initializing function. So we will need a few basic things in order to get our game running. And those are going to be our screen. So first of all, we need to initialize our 3D screen. Then we need to give it lighting and we need to have a floor. With floor, I actually mean the map of the game on which the characters are going to be playing. And we will also need a running function, which I'm going to call loop, which is going to actually run our game. So for that, we are going to create a scene and that scene is going to include all the elements of our game, including our heroes, monsters, the map, every particles, obstacles. So if you take a look at this, Actually, 3.js is using WebGL renderer, which is going to be our renderer. So basically, this is going to be the canvas in which all our elements are going to be displayed. So this corresponds actually to the DOM element property as shown here in the documentation. Next up would be to initialize some basic variables, which we will need throughout the entire game. So stuff like field of view, scene, renderer, container, controls, and so on. So basically those are uh, the most common variables you will need when developing such a game. Next up, we are going to initialize our lighting. And for this, I'm also using a lot of stuff I found on Stack Overflow and GitHub so that I don't have to come up with those numbers by myself. Then we need to initialize the floor, since our floor is going to be half of a uh, circle or earth. Uh, I'm using here sphere geometry, also copying standard uh, values from the internet here. So after we have initialized all of those three basic elements, we can initialize our loop, which is going to run our game. The loop is going to render the game and update the floor accordingly. So in our case, since our world is spinning constantly, it is going to spin it. And we will also gradually increase the speed as time passes. Next up would be to initialize our environment. And this is going to include some trees, particles, and just to make our map more interesting and beautiful. For this, we need to create a tree with all its geometrics, edges, and so on. So for this, I'm also using a lot of free stuff that exists already in the internet. This can actually get quite complicated, and there are a lot of moving parts into creating those geometric spheres. So basically, it boils down to maths and calculating the geometric spheres of the objects. After the groundwork, we can actually 
see uh, our game in action. So let us see what we have built. As you can see, we have already built the world with a few trees, particles and the green earth that is rotating. As of now, it is rotating a bit faster, but we will implement this later on to start with a slower rotation and increase it gradually over time. So far so good. We have our lighting, floor, the environment and we are rendering this in our loop function. So now it is time to add more features to our game. I'm going to start by creating our hero, after which we are going to add monsters, obstacles and some features to make the game more interesting. So let us start by creating the function and first of all let us add the function in the initializing function. So first of all we are going to need to create our hero and we are now going to need to give him some coordinates, his rotation, position and his material. After which we are going to need to create the actual hero. The hero is going to contain from different parts. Those parts are going to include his torso, his ears, his foot, and after that we are also going to add functions to it so that he can run, jump, sit and so on. As you can see we are again using geometry and certain formulas to create those parts. So in the end those are just objects which consist of certain edges, curves, depth, length and width. So I'm mostly going to the internet and copying stuff about different objects so I don't have to come up with this by myself. We can of course create this to be as complex as we want but in order to keep it simple we are going to start with a simple torso, head and ear. So as you can see our character is starting to look like something. As a next step we are going to create the monster. So basically we can copy a lot of stuff since the principle stays the same. We just need to change the geometric objects a little bit and we also need to change the coloring. Later on we are actually going to create the animations which are going to give a vibrant and live feel to our characters. So I'm basically experimenting without characters here, adding different torsos, parts, elements, twisting them left and right to create them fit better. The next step is to actually create the functions and the behavior of our characters. So let us start with our hero. Our hero is going to be able to run. When our hero runs, different parts of him are moving with different angles. So for that, we have different running cycles, which are going to move the parts uh, forward with the x-axis and y-axis and also move them backwards. So for this we are going to introduce new rotations and positions for our body. And as you can imagine the more moving parts our body has the more complicated this gets. So if we were using something like Unity or Unreal Engine we would have a lot of this already prepared within our physics engine but basically here we need to create that engine by ourselves since we are starting from scratch. Now we are also going to add a jump function to our hero which again is quite similar to the other functions it just moves in a different direction. So let us actually see what we have created so far. Here we have our two characters our monster and our hero. The hero now has functionalities for running and as you can see there are some smooth body movements that indicate that our character is running, which of course needs to correlate with the speed of our earth rotating. Our monster so far can't do anything, he's just moving in the forward direction, the same speed as our hero. Our hero can also jump, maybe the jumps are a bit too long. I probably need to tweak the physics there a little bit and I have noticed that this is one of the most cumbersome parts because I don't really know how the physics engine is going to behave and I need to come up with those numbers quite randomly and improve iteratively on them. The next feature we are going to add is a game over screen. So in the case that our monster catches the bunny we need to indicate that the game has finished 
and initialize an animation sequence. As of now, the game is just going to stop, which is fine. We are going to create the body movements later on. Now we can improve our game and add different features. So the first thing we are going to add are carrots. So again, we are going to create our mesh and in a similar fashion that we have created other parts um, of the game, for example, the torso and the parts of the heroes and monsters, we are also going to create the carrot. The carrot also needs to disappear when caught and needs to appear at a random location after it has been caught. And the carrot also needs to give some speed and decrease the distance between the monster and our hero. And we also need to calculate that stuff which we are going to implement in our loop. So for that, we are first going to create a function to update the carrot position. And now there are carrots in the game which we can catch, but we also need to add object detection and collision systems in order to also accept that carrot when our hero collides with it. But before we do that, let us first initialize our user interface. By that, we're just going to grab the HTML and initialize our area of playing. Next, we are going to create an obstacle and we are going to create that obstacle in the same way we have created the carrots. We need to create the hedgehog, we need to initialize it, we need to generate a, a random next position for it and we also are going to need the object detection collision system afterward. We can also add some particles to this in order to make it more vivid when we catch something or when we hit a hedgehog. So let us actually start our game and see how this works together. So as you can see, our character or hero is running. He can jump, catch the carrots. There are also hedgehogs. The collision detection system seems to work. And every time we collide with something, our status gets updated. Either our speed slows down and the monster catches us or our speed increases when we catch a carrot. We also have the game over screen now. When our hero gets caught by the monster, uh, we go to the game over scene in which our hero sits and the hedgehog catches him in his mouth. Thank you so much for watching, there is still so much to learn around this topic. So far we have just touched the surface. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, if you didn't, a thumbs down. If you liked the topic, click leave a comment. If you would like to see something else for our for next video, also leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great one.